Well, hello there, my art tribe. So I have a very, very, very big surprise for you guys at the end of this video. So make sure you watch till the end. Now we are going to do something special and I'm going to surprise you guys because this is something unlike you've never seen before. I have never made this kind of art. So first of all, my canvas is a 16 by 20 canvas. It's just a stretched canvas that you can get from any art supply store or Amazon, all the good stuff, wherever you want. And now we know that before we go ahead and do any kind of art on any kind of stretched canvas, you definitely want to prime your canvas. So here I'm using a Liquitex black gesso. I never knew that there was a black gesso. I mean, I've always seen the white. I think that's the classic, but you know, things happen. I found it. I used it. So there's that. Now we're switching things up a little bit here. I use the Art Resin resin. And of course, I am using my favorite pigments, this little pigment, which are the best. And they actually just dropped a huge amount, I think about 12 or 13 new colors. Now, the first one I'm using is the TLP Rose Quartz. So we're just gonna take a little bit and go ahead and add it into our cup. These pigments are super pigmented, so you don't need too, too much. Now, after I mixed my resin, I went ahead and I did put them in six different cups because um, I do want um, to get ready with my resin and have everything there first before I mix my pigments. The second one is ball gown, and we're gonna see in a little bit all the colors when I mix them up. Now, this next color is the Pinot Gris. You guys, these colors are so pretty. I cannot wait for you to see them when I mix them up. Now the next one is going to be Glisten. And if you have not used these pigments before and have not seen them, go ahead to the Fluid Art Co. website. Now this is Velvet. Next up is Sequence. There we go. So we're gonna add all that in first and then mix, mix, mix. Now, you know very well that I always tell you guys when you mix your resin with your pigments, um, always mix your resin prior. You want your mixed resin to be fully mixed. You don't want any striations in there. And if you add your pigment first before you mix your two-part resin, you might actually not you know, um, see the striations or see how well you mixed it. And of course, when you're mixing, you also know to scrape the sides of your cups the corners, the edges, the sides, the bottoms. You want to be very methodical and get all that resin because we do not want to waste any of the material we did. We don't want to ruin our art piece and all that good stuff. So I am mixing up my last one here. So we got all of those in. Now I already put a little bit of that resin from the beginning on my canvas as a base. Now it's been sitting here for a little bit while I'm mixing my colors. So I am using my heat gun to get rid of any of those bubbles that are rising to the top. So go ahead and do that. And then of course, while you're wearing your uh, gloves, cause we don't touch our resin without our gloves, we're gonna go ahead and spread that resin nice and evenly all over that canvas to give us a nice, beautiful base to make our art piece. Now, can you guys guess what I am going to make? Now, again, this is something I've never made before. And um, I thought it would be fun if you guys maybe try to guess what I'm gonna do before I do it. Now we went ahead and did that and oh my goodness, you guys look at that color pop on that black. I mean, I was not expecting that, did you? These colors are so pretty. So all I'm doing here, I'm just taking my popsicle stick, my craft stick, whatever you wanna use, and I am just going to kind of like swirl these colors around. Oh my goodness, look at these colors. I am absolutely in love right now. I cannot even tell you how beautiful these are and how excited I was to use these. Look at that blue. I think so far out of all the colors, this blue is my favorite. And this is the first time that I'm using these colors from the PR package that the company sent me and I am obsessed. Look at that rainbow. What do you guys think? Am I making a rainbow swirly piece? I think it might be. So here we are, so swirl, swirl, swirl. They don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be even. Nothing in art is perfect. And what we're gonna go ahead and do is just Go with our hearts. Have you guys watched those videos, the food videos where people say there is no limit to garlic that you put into your food? I feel like it's the same thing with colors and glitters when I make my art pieces. If you know anything about me, I put glitter in everything. I overpigment everything. I put gold in everything. And I'm really surprised that I didn't put a lot more of the gold color in here because we all know that's my favorite, but then there you go. 
I just added some more. I just added some more. But I am loving this. And at this point, I kind of was also thinking to myself that, you know what, Annie? This really might be just it. And I might just want to kind of cover the canvas like this and just leave it. But I can't leave good enough alone. That's just not me. It's not what I do. So we're going to keep adding these beautiful colors. And so far, can you guys tell me which color you like best in the comments? Because I honestly can't decide. And I do feel like one color is way more beautiful than the other. And honestly, I'm obsessed with these. So you guys definitely need to try these colors. Once again, the colors are from Fluid Art Co. They are incredible. And they have their piggies. And their piggies are all of their pigments. They have an insane amount of these piggies on their websites, all the colors, all the iridescence. They are just absolutely out of this world. And I got actually introduced to them right before I went to PorCon, if you guys remember back this summer, uh, where I taught ocean art and how to make dominoes and all that good stuff. And they have basically become my family. So anytime they have new pigments, I mean, I am obsessed and I have to use them right away. And this is what's happening here. So. Um, I went ahead and put all the colors down and once again we're using the heat gun to go ahead and pop those bubbles and slightly kind of like blend those colors in. The heat gun will also help kind of, you know, warm your resin a little bit to help it move and oh my goodness we are going to move all of these colors. Please look at those colors blend. This looks exactly like an Aurora Borealis. And at this point, I kind of didn't know what I was doing because I, again, was just pouring out of my heart. I wanted to do something different. I wanted to do something new. Look at those colors blend. I cannot with these colors. All right, so one more time, we're gonna go over it with a heat gun. And um, if you have questions about these heat guns, guys, leave them in the comments. But again, um, you can go to, you know, michael's any craft store they'll always have those smaller artist hand guns that you can use the heat guns um these you can get off of amazon or home depot home depot is my favorite place to kind of go for like these a little bit of um, bigger tools i do like to see my tools in my hands before um, I use them, but these colors just are blending so well together. That's the magic of um, the TLP piggies and they just, they're magic. I mean, look at that. Does that not look like a shot a photographer took um, up north with like the Aurora Borealis? It's actually one of my dreams to go to um, see them because it is magic. It is unreal and yeah, these these pigments are actually bringing them to life right in front of our eyes. All right, so we're going to go ahead and push those around a little bit more to blend them to just get a little bit more of a natural look. And, you know, the heat gun, whenever, whatever areas you feel like you might not have gotten right, you can go ahead and push them around a little bit more with the heat gun. Be graceful with yourself. Art never comes out exactly the way you like. So you can play with it and just go with it. And again, like the garlic limit, there's no limit to what we can do with our art. So you are gonna go ahead and keep doing that. Now we are using the Amsterdam Titanium White. What do you guys think I'm going to be doing with this? So we're gonna get just a little bit out of there. We're gonna go ahead and mix, mix, mix. We're gonna uh, dilute it actually with a little bit of water. Sometimes if your paint is too thick, we can go ahead and do that. A little bit of water in acrylic paint is just fine. So we're gonna go ahead and use this brush now. And you guessed it, we are going to brush on little stars so like little flickies you can go ahead and do this and if you don't have this kind of brush you can also use um, a tiny paintbrush and just like kind of flick the bristles off of it once you put the paint on it and um i've even seen people use a toothbrush which is kind of really cool so um now we're going to go ahead and use a little bit more of that amsterdam uh paint we're going to use the mars black i believe and you guessed it, you guys. I mean, I did. Did I? I don't think I could hide that this was an aurora borealis. And if it's an aurora borealis with a colorful sky, what else to paint more beautiful than some trees? There it is. So I'm going ahead and setting up kind of the the barks of the trees first, the placements, kind of getting a feel of the canvas and where I want everything. And um, if you guys couldn't tell, obviously I can't paint on wet resin, so the resin has to fully cure before you do this. So that's what I did. Um, 
So once you go ahead and you start putting in the barks of your trees, you start getting your placement, start lightly kind of putting in the the branches, the little leaves and stuff. This is obviously very abstract. It's not going to be super detailed or anything. So don't overthink it. Just kind of go with your heart and, you know, start larger on the bottom. And as you go higher into the trees, you could go in smaller and lighter to kind of give the definition of the trees where they are fuller on the bottom. And of course, again, lighter on the top. So as I'm doing this, I just wanted to talk about something else. Now, while I was doing the trees, um, something you want to think about with any kind of art that you're making, use different colors, use different sizes, use different textures, right? So as you can see with the TLPs, I didn't go with just, let's say, just greens and whites and blues. I mixed in a little bit of the gold. I mixed in a little bit of the purple and the rose quartz and all the different colors. And it just gives a lot more dimension, right? And as you can see also in certain areas, I did push the colors a little bit away in certain areas like on the top right hand corner on the on the right side on the left side that way you get a little bit of the darkness from the back peeking through the middles of the areas and that way it gives you so much more dimension already more than these colors are already giving you from the TLPs right so also with the trees what I'm doing some of them will be a little bit shorter some of them will be smaller some of them will be taller than the others and this will just give you the dimension of real life so um, not everything has to be even when you're making more of a landscape or natural scene from the world you want to think about that when you're looking at the sky when you're looking at the forest when you're looking at trees you want to think about that distance right so that's kind of also what I was doing here now you can see that the tree I'm working on now is a lot smaller than let's say the one that's next to it and the one that's in the middle and yeah so use different sizes and you know certain areas of the trees can be fuller than the others so that's what i'm doing here as well you can see that the bottoms are a lot more full certain areas i leave a little bit more empty it's just how nature works so that's what we're gonna do now i am going to go ahead and just finish up these trees over here and there you have it friends but unfortunately i have to complain about something this is not my art piece this is a video part of the december piggy switcheroo where 26 amazing artists have made videos we've switched them up posted them on each other's channels and you are gonna go ahead in the comments and try to figure out who this incredible artist is now this has been going on for the past two weeks and it's just a really fun way to get us artists together for you to discover new incredible artists. I met every single one of these beautiful souls at PORCON this summer and I am so incredibly grateful to be part of the switcheroo. So there is a video coming up in a second where you can see all the artists names and I want to see your best guesses friends. So go ahead and check out all the artists and I can't wait to see all your comments. I will see you guys soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope this artist inspired you to make some Aurora Borealis beautiful forest art paintings. Bye Art Tribe, thank you so much.